Here are all the materials you'll need for this project. First, you'll need a styrofoam tray, a roller, a plastic knife, brown block printing ink, letter sized paper, a thin styrofoam board for etching onto, and a legal sized paper to print. Smooth paper will print better for thinner inks, while construction paper is better if the ink is very thick or watery. We will draw a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil and some other fossils around it. Start by drawing a horizontal oval and a circle in the middle of the page. These are guidelines for the rib cage and pelvis. Next, draw a long S shape for the curve of the spine. Start from the top left, go down, curve right, and curve down to the bottom right. Draw another line right next to this one and end the tail in a point. Draw an oval for the head. Now we will work on the legs by drawing three lines that are bent for each leg. Draw the first line down, a second shorter line going back, and a third line going forward. Do the same for the other legs, but the back legs should be much longer. Next, we'll draw guidelines on each side of the spine to make it easier to draw the bones. Draw a line above the spine but close to it. Skip the area above the pelvis. Below the spine, make the line come out at the ribs and grow closer again for the tail. Draw the pelvis by making a circle shape with two curved pieces cut out at the bottom. The middle piece that sticks out should be longer than the others. Now we will work on the head. Draw a bent piece for the mouth like a slice of pizza. Then draw the teeth along the top and connect the rest of the head. Put a bump above the eye and nose. For the jaw, draw the teeth and follow the oval guideline from before. Make sure the top and bottom piece don't touch. Next, draw an irregular oval for the eye, two vertical ovals on either side of the eye, and a small oval for the nostril. Next, we'll draw the legs. Draw two big and long bones for the first sections of the back legs. Then draw two smaller bones for the next section, and two even smaller bones for the last section. Do the same for the front legs. Make sure the bones don't touch. Draw three curved triangle shapes for the claws. On the back feet, draw a hook on the top of the last section and three curved claws at the bottom. We will split up the spine into different segments, so using the guidelines, draw curved lines across the two lines and make them into curved boxes. Go all the way to the tip. Next, on top of each segment, draw a small rectangular bone coming out. Then underneath the segment, draw a curved claw-like bone that gets longer at the ribs. Make sure the bone curves to the right and touches the guideline you drew earlier. Now we can erase all the guidelines inside the bones and between the spine. Now we're going to fill the background with some plants and fossils. You can draw any that you like, but I will show you how to draw an ammonite and a horseshoe crab to start. For the ammonite, draw an oval and fill the oval with a swirl that cuts off at the edge. Draw a line for the opening and then draw lines rotating around the ammonite. You can also draw plants such as this one. Draw a curved line and long leaf shapes coming off the line. Make the stem and draw a line to split the leaves in half. Also draw all the veins. I'm putting another ammonite here. The next plant, I will put many leaves on each section of the stem. Finally, for the horseshoe crab, draw an oval, a long spine coming out at the end, 
then a line across the middle and a curved line at the center. Draw a shield-like cover and three spikes on each side of the horseshoe crab. Erase the guidelines and draw a moon shape inside the crab. Now we will etch the drawing onto styrofoam. First, tape the drawing at the top onto the styrofoam, making sure you can flip the paper open. The paper is slightly bigger than the styrofoam, but when you etch, you will just have to extend the drawing to the borders. Apply firm pressure and use a sharp pencil to trace all the lines. If this is difficult and the lines don't show up on the styrofoam, you will just have to retrace again on the styrofoam. If the paper rips, it's okay, just make sure not to rip the styrofoam. Open the paper to check that you're making the lines on the styrofoam. Once you're finished tracing, check your styrofoam in case you missed any lines. We will now retrace the lines to make deeper indents into the styrofoam. This will produce the best result when printing. We'll use a dull pencil to make thicker lines and a sharp pencil for thin lines. For the dinosaur, outline with the dull pencil and etch in all the bones. Then for the plants and fossils, re-outline with the sharp pencil. Finally, we'll put sand by poking dots onto the styrofoam. Start with the dull pencil on the dinosaur. Now use the sharp pencil for the background. Fill in the dinosaur fossils with the dull pencil. You can also etch some patterns onto the other fossils. I'm filling in the background with more plants. Finally, use the dull pencil to put dots for the sand. You can also use the sharp pencil to put different sizes of dots. Now we can begin printing. Take some ink and roll it onto the styrofoam, making sure it's evenly rolled. Roll in different directions. Next, roll the ink onto the styrofoam, making sure to cover all parts. If necessary, add more ink. Roll in different directions. When the styrofoam is inked, get your paper and carefully place the styrofoam face down in the center. Hold the styrofoam and flip the paper. Thoroughly and firmly rub all over the paper to make sure the ink transfers cleanly. You can check the print to see if you need to add more ink or rub more. Once you're done, remove the paper starting from one side. 